Just a decade ago, Philips was the third largest electronics company in the world, alongside Samsung and Sony. The company was known for its dominance in industries from lighting to radio, and was responsible for inventing or co-inventing every major physical media format, including the CD, DVD, and Blu-ray. Philips also helped to birth many of the semiconductor industry giants, such as ASML and Taiwan's TSMC. Despite appearances, Philips had become an insignificant shell of its former self by the 2010s. From the outside, it still seemed like an electronics giant, with Philips Hue lights, vacuums, electric razors, Amplite TVs, and other products commonly found in homes and businesses. However, this was mostly an illusion. The company had given up on the electronics industry and had sold off its business piece by piece to competitors, mostly in Asia. They had even sold the rights to use the Philips brand to those companies. In 2010, the CEO of Philips made an announcement that shocked the world. He proudly declared that Philips was no longer a high-tech company. This was surprising to hear from a company that had been a giant and innovator in the electronics industry, with over 350,000 employees at its peak. The only two consumer-facing product lines that Philips still had in 2010 were razors and oral hygiene products like electric toothbrushes, which made up only about 15% of its business. In total, Philips was now less than a tenth of the size of current electronics giant Samsung. It was fitting then that Philips dropped electronics from its name officially in 2013. This is the sad story of how decades of mismanagement and failed innovation made Europe's last electronics giant kind of irrelevant. Philips was founded in 1891 by the Philips family, and over the course of 130 years, the company developed five significant business units, each with a lasting legacy. Its logo indicates the five business units, lighting, radio, vacuum tubes, medical equipment, and semiconductors. The company slowly built its way to the top of the lighting market by combining solid product quality with great marketing and aggressive business practices. In 1925, Philips became part of the infamous Phoebus Cartel, along with competitors like General Electric and Germany's Osram, where the various companies agreed to come together and artificially increase prices, while also lowering the useful lifespan of light bulbs to a maximum of 1,000 hours. These companies basically invented planned obsolescence. While the cartel was dissolved around the Second World War, Philips continued to grow steadily and became the largest producer of lighting products worldwide. The business remained relatively solid until the 2000s, when LED technologies fundamentally upset the economics of the industry. Philips decided that they would be better off just separating their whole lighting division into an independent company, rather than figuring out how to bring it back to profitability. This is a practice that you'll see quite often from the company. And so in 2016, Signify was born as a new and independent company that carried on Philips's lighting business. Since its independence, Signify has significantly outperformed its parent Philips that so desperately wanted to offload it due to finding new major success in connected lights and the Internet of Things. In 1914, Philips used the originally profitable business of light bulbs to finance their so-called Philips Physics Laboratory, an extremely ambitious dedicated research organization that acted much like the legendary Xerox Park or AT&T's Bell Laboratories, with generous funding and thousands of the world's best scientists, including even occasionally a visiting Albert Einstein. They developed many fundamental scientific breakthroughs, including the cornerstones of modern radio technology. This research formed Philips's second successful product category, which also happens to be visible in the company's logo. In 2021, Philips sold its domestic appliances division, which produced products such as vacuum cleaners and coffee machines, marking the company's official exit from the electronics industry. However, this sad story is not the only disappointing news as the company's semiconductor business unit was also sold off in 2006 due to poor management and market fluctuations. This semiconductor unit was once the second largest in the world, and its sale led to the creation of an independent company called NXP. Today, NXP is worth four times more than Philips, and it has become much more profitable than its parent company due to its focus on specialized chips for industrial and automotive applications. Today, 
Philips sees itself entirely as a healthcare technology company. While this gives the company a clear focus, its actual performance in this field has been mediocre, including a recent massive recall. Moreover, even in this field, its comfortable position might not be safe forever, as new trends like telemedicine, AI-powered diagnosis, and more threaten to bring a fundamental shakeup of the industry. Despite Philips's contribution to the modern semiconductor industry, the company captured very little of the value it created, which is incredibly frustrating. Philips's partial birth of the modern semiconductor industry incubated three of the world's most important chip companies, but was not successful in capturing much of the value. Philips's investments in R&D, which are now between 9 and 10% of its revenue, may not be enough to keep the company from oversleeping the next revolution. Is there a future for tech giant Philips? This is Tech and Butter. Subscribe and leave a like for more tech videos.